Hello, Willie Parasival, back with another wonderful video. And honestly, today we are going to be doing more Terraria because uh, it's one of my favorite games. And uh, I received such wonderful comments and stuff about Terraria last time I played that I decided that this wonderful next video was going to be dedicated towards a little bit more of my world. Uh, this one, we're going to be going through the NPCs that we currently have in the world. And I'm going to tell you what the general plan is and uh how we're going to handle each of them uh each one of the npcs i have certain places in the world and i have a place i haven't built my house where i'm going to have the other pets but i did build a slime hotel and i love it and not all the other npcs are where i want them to be and i do have a really cool chart that i'm going to show everybody about where i feel like everybody's going to be it's uh it's over on that side of the screen right now we're going to be going through that in a second but um right now we are just going to go to each of the npcs i'm going to show you what what my plan is who i'm going to have with them and then um what my plans for creating their space are uh so I think first we should start down, and then we'll move left, then right. I feel like that's going to be our best case for how to handle this. So first, uh, for some reason I can't go down. There we go. So on our first stop in this dome, I feel like I'm actually going to expand the dome out and make more of a mushroom kingdom as a joke. Uh, but that's how I feel we're going to handle the, the glowing mushroom biome. And in the glowing mushroom biome, we are going to have three NPCs. And that is going to be, if we look right... Uh, right down in the pairs, it is the uh, it's the third pair, and it's Truffle, the Guide, and Princess. Since the Princess is liked by everybody, and because uh, the the Guide likes Truffle, or the Truffle likes Guide, the Guide doesn't really care either way. And uh, actually, does the Guide care? Give me one second. I've been using the wiki all day, trying to figure out these NPC pairs, make sure that nobody dislikes anybody, and it's been going pretty well. But some of the actual NPCs are very picky about who they do and don't want to be with and who they dislike and possibly hate because the actual, the actual way they handle it in the game. And here, let me, let me pull it up is that uh, perfect. Here, let me close out of this. That didn't go as I wanted it to. Hmm. Anyways. So the the actual guide is that uh, every NPC either loves, likes, dislikes, or hates. It's what people have tested over the time. It's how they've responded based on their their uh, where they are in the game, what they're next to, who they're next to. Depends on how happy they can be uh, become. And with my wonderful list over here, we have their loves and their likes. We didn't care about anything else. And my goal was to get every NPC next to somebody they either loved or in a situation they liked so we could get the pylons and make sure that the NPCs were happy. In the world, I really don't want the NPCs to be like, God, I hate it here. I hate it next to this person. So I, I want to take extra care of the NPCs. And we have most of the pylons, I think, except for the, for the hollow one and the pylon for any but we haven't defeated the moon lord yet but uh right now we're we don't have the mushroom one because i haven't brought the uh the truffle guy here yet i haven't i haven't defeated plantera yet so i can't get truffle we have a lot of things we need to do and some more npcs we need to unlock even before we can get the princess but this is just my future plan but my goal with this entire place is to have... I'm going to move the stylus out of here. She is going over to... Uh, 
she is going over to the desert to be next to the dye trader. Even though she doesn't necessarily like the desert, she loves the dye trader. And I feel like that will fix her move, her mood. Because originally I wanted to put the stylist somewhere else. I wanted to put her here because the stylist. No, I wanted to put her with the pirate. Because the angler? No. Oh, she loves the ocean. She loves the ocean, and I wanted to put her over at the uh, at the ocean with the pirate and everybody, but the pirate hates the stylus. Anyways, I'm putting her next to the dye trader so she's happy, and they'll be over in the desert, and we'll go visit there in a second, but at least for right now, in here, we are going to have the... Uh, we're going to have... The guide, Truffle, and the princess. All three will get along just fine. It will be a grand old time. And I feel like this is a very cool setup for what I'm going for. I want to make the entire thing look like it's in a snow globe. And I feel I'm already accomplishing that goal. I just also think it would be nice to be taller and have slightly taller buildings represented in here as well. Maybe nothing too large, but like four-story or five-story apartment complex style buildings would be nice. It's just foreground and everything. Uh, in here, in our actual underground one, we currently have the tavern keeper, the clother, and the demolitionist. I actually really like how this is set up already. I might change one of their buildings around to something nicer, but having the tavern keeper's house be like an actual tavern style, style building, I think is adorable. And they are actually, if we look at the list, all already in their right place. So much so that we already actually have the like a and since we're already in hard mode, we have the underground teleport pylon right here. So once we get the once we get Truffle into the underground mushroom biome, he will definitely, you know, love the place. We'll get the mushroom like uh, stand and we'll be able to teleport around to each of our select NPCs if I do this right. With this, let's head back up. Next, we're going to be going to the left. Our first stomp is going to be the desert and then the jungle. Uh, right now in the desert, I believe, is the die trader, the nurse, and the arms dealer. And with me adding another one, I'm going to have to spread them out a little bit. And probably only have them work in pairs. But I already have the desert pylon, so I'm not too worried about it. So right now we have the arms dealer and the nurse. They're kind of like right next to each other right now. Nice happiness. Uh, these digs are great. Love the personal space. What well, Willie the arm shooter? I don't have a crush. I don't shut up. Obviously, there's cute things like this amongst the NPCs, and I want to make sure that their happiness is great. But since there's going to be four of them in the space, I actually have to technically separate them a little bit. So I'm going to be moving the die trader over to the other side of this lake. And I'm going to be building a sphinx over here to be represent, represent, represented <laughs> as well. Having trouble speaking. <laughs> and I'm hoping to use the sphinx as their home. And my main goal with the entire world itself is to make sure that every ounce of the world from left to right when you land at the center of it i want you to be able to run to either side of the world and not be able to stop and just make it as easy as possible i'll definitely try to you know make the land curved in the image of it i'll try to make sure that we don't lose a good portion of the slopes the highs the lows i want to keep all of that but i also want well-lit paths and an easy traversal from one side or the other because we all know how awful it is in terraria when you're having to like just over jump everything just to cross the landscape. You don't like these gosh darn bumps and grooves everywhere if you can't travel smoothly across them. This game, most of the combat, you're trying to dodge out of the way and you can't do that if you're constantly landing on an uneven footing. Uh, let's see, our next zone should be the jungle. We have to go a little bit further. This is going to definitely be an interesting spot to carve through because I think the jungle we're going to be building on one or the other ends to be close to the forest. Actually, we might not even worry about that. We might just put who I want to in the uh, 
in the jungle and not worry about like trying to get closer to one of their favorite biomes i think they'll be fine just because of who they're going to be next to so right now all we have is the dryad the uh the painter and uh witch doctor himself so the witch doctor is actually loved by the zoologist and because the painter loves the dryad that means I can build homes for both of them, and the plan for their homes is actually a pretty unique one. There are living trees that spawn to the world, but I always feel like they're not as grand as they should be. So I'm going to be making larger trees and then maybe like a world tree style thing in the actual jungle itself. That's my main goal overall. I want to have like a giant forest that you have to go through for the actual jungle. And I want the NPCs to have tree houses within that space as well. So they should be out of danger. I want to place them higher above so they don't have to worry about the threats below. Uh, let's see. Next, we're going to have to actually go back to the center of the map. Perfect. We'll hop and jump right over. Like, this is what I want to do. I want to start slowly develop, put trees down, put benches, put flowers, make the world look beautiful, make it look lived in, make it custom. And every single one of the things inside the battle arena is used to buff you. So you're running around and you're not losing any buffs while you're doing it. Like, I want everything to have utility in the world. I'm going to have to get rid of this tunnel at some point, this other tunnel, because I made the one below it just to make it easier on myself. Uh, as for the forest, I actually couldn't come up with anything till now, and we'll have to swap it around. I have to move a couple of NPCs around. But here at the forest biome, we're actually going to... I'm going to probably rebuild these houses and everything. We're actually going to have the merchant and the tax collector, and that's it. Because the tax collector actually loves the merchant, and the merchant actually gets along with the tax collector, if I remember correctly. I should genuinely check. I might be wrong on that one. The merchant might dislike the tax collector, and if that's true, I might have to I might have to figure something out. Please don't dislike the tax collector. He dislikes the tax collector. Fuck. Uh, well, he likes the forest, so maybe I'll put the tax collector over on one side of this this place, and then this guy on the other, and the guide on the or the uh, the merchant on the other. But I I still already have the uh, the pylon for this section, so I'm not too worried about it. But we'll move them around, knowing that the merchant obviously dislikes the tax collector because he's a merchant. I will have to figure out <laughs> where I want to move people. Damn. Hmm. I love that he loves the... <laughs> Do I make the merchant's day a little bit worse? But the fact that he lives in the forest will be good enough. Maybe. I'll think about it. I'll see how good the deals are and what the merchant says at the end. But we'll get there once we get the tax collector. I have a couple of NPCs I have to collect, like the... Let's see. We still need the princess. We still need the cyborg. Uh, we still need truffle, tax collector. And I believe that's it. I believe we only need those four NPCs. And once we get the other three, we get the princess. So... Technically, we only need three, and that's Truffle, the Tax Collector, and Cyborg. We'll take care of those. Cyborg comes after we finish off Skeletor, I believe. Truffle finishes after we finish... After there's an above-ground mushroom biome. So we have to turn something into a mushroom biome at some point. Uh, and if I remember correctly, the Tax Collector... I have absolutely no idea. I will have to look at what it takes to get the tax collector in the game. Uh, a tortured soul is transformed with 
purification power in the underworld. Replaces the guide as the starting NPC in a dome. Okay. So I have to go find a tortured soul and use purification powder on it. Fair enough? I'll do that after this, <laughs> obviously. Right now, I'm just telling you my plans. So I got to make both of their houses. I don't know whether I'll have them next to each other now, now that I know that the merchant dislikes it. But the tax collector loves it. And he loves the forest. Or he loves the snow biome, and it'll be right next to it. I don't know. Who knows? I'll contemplate it. Uh, but yeah, just making natural flow of the terrain, using things like platforms so you can still fish in these territories. Uh, over here, I'm actually going to build a house for these two underground. More towards the tunnel, like right over here. And that's actually where they're going to be. And the pylon will still be here, but the two people who are, are going to be up here are actually going to be the cyborg and the steam bunker since the steam bunker loves the cyborg and the cyborg doesn't give a hoot and actually likes the the steam bunker and likes the snow biome so both of them can enjoy the the surface and i'll put the other two underground because the goblin tinkerer loves it underground but he also loves uh he likes underground but he also loves the mechanic and the mechanic loves the goblin tinkerer so i definitely want to keep those two together I don't know what I'm going to style their houses as yet. I think I tr I kind of try to make specialty houses for each person. You'll see as we get further that way, or further that, that way, that way in the world. It's the opposite on my camera. I should flip this really. Anyways, that way, uh, as we go that way in the world, you'll see more custom things that I've built over time across the terrain and how I've just made my life a little bit easier for some of the stuff. But I definitely want to redo some of these staircases, redo some things in the world, make them better, because I built them originally, and now I want to change them. I definitely want the steampunk, steampunker and the cyborg to have more of a futuristic house. So I will see about that. Maybe have their house be like two floating UFOs slightly above the land or something. I don't know yet. Maybe like a little UFO attacking village thing and it's like a beam coming down striking one of the houses and it's like <laughs> I don't know I'll figure it out I like to tinker and come up with the ideas on the fly sometimes for some of the projects in the world some of them I change purely on instinct just because I feel like they need to be done a different way but as we move towards it you'll see that I've terraformed some of the land and then haven't terraformed other parts of it Uh, we have hollow in the game. I have to figure out what biomes I'm going to want in the game because I eventually want to divide the world. Each biome is going to have a pillar in which the biome will not be able to cross over. I wanted to make it out of material that literally cannot be con uh, contaminated by either crimson, corruption, or hollow. And I want to make every single biome in the game that you need for any task already exists on the map and i want to make basically a giant checkerboard of biomes and then from there build everybody's nice houses and everything and just have a good time it doesn't have to be an even checkerboard i just want things dividing up each of the territories and then eventually, that will probably be a job for me to, once I get the, like, uh, the surface done how I want it to, I'll probably do it in something like T-Edit or something along those lines and uh, just change it, do the lines, do the caverns and everything just to save a bit of time because nobody wants to dig 17 consecutive tunnels to hell and also, like, 23 tunnels across exactly straight unless you're a certain freak fiance of mine who likes to dig through the entire world <laughs> i was telling him that nobody likes to dig like 17 multiple tunnels to hell and then 20 tunnels across perfectly straight yeah you ain't farm it I gotta, I gotta split up the biomes in a little while. 
once I carve out the land how I need it. Uh, here's a little build project that I did for when I was doing the new podcast set. So in the future, we should have chat right around here on the screen, and then we'll be down below, and the rest will be the topic. I might change it a little bit. I might make this a little bit shorter, because just staring at it now, I don't feel like it needs to be that big for chat. And I can also overlay it and see how it looks beforehand, test it a little bit uh, with OBS, blah, blah, blah. This is, this is not about NPCs. Let's continue. <laughs> uh let's see where's our next spot we're getting ever so close to the dungeon dungeon i've already started re <laughs> i was about to say rehabilitating uh changing i have already started changing the dungeon into what i need it to be uh and here's currently the beach i need to change a couple of things but here's my favorite build so far I have this wonderful lighthouse for aesthetic purposes. I have the coral tunnel down to the tunnel for us to go back and forth on the rails. And then over here, I have the uh, the house for the angler and the pirate. And it's definitely one of my favorite builds in the game so far is just this one. Building them a tiny ship. I might build it bigger in the future, like build it up a little bit higher, build it up a little bit taller, make it a bigger ship. I also want to make it a nice way to transition from here to there. So I might try to make a plank or something at some point. I don't know. It will definitely be awkward. Or I might make a raised platform and then like a, a little bridge or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But right now, this is what I'm just, this is what I'm, this is probably captures the best image of what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make sure that all the NPCs are happy where they are. And I'm also trying to make that, make sure that since they're happy, they should also have something that's catered towards them. So like, I feel like the tax collector's house should be like a mansion, but there should just be piles of money around. Or like... <sighs> The nurse's room, I should customize it more to look like a, uh, like a nurse's station. And the, uh, the, the arms dealer should have, like, ammo cases and stuff lying around in his, uh, in his house and stuff. I want to customize each of their places to their own custom unique personalities. Make them fit in, make them feel at home where they are. So... I hope everybody enjoyed this video. It's not going to be an overly long one, but uh, it's one that I wanted to talk about and where I feel like I'm going to be taking my builds in the future. How I have fun with Terraria is just genuinely building my perfect world, attaining all the items in the game and placing them in one place to look over and cherish. I like my own little... No matter how cheesy is it to say, giant terrarium. <laughs> but yeah, with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you're excited for the future plans for this world. I might still stream Terraria and me and my building exploits as we just add things into the world. I finish projects. We take out and add back corruption or add crimson into the world as well. I, I am happy that everybody is going to be here for the ride. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope to see you in the next one. And if I don't see you in the next one, I hope you have a good afternoon, good evening, and a good night. Take care, and bye-bye.